you to today's session. So today's session is the third one of a mini series of three webinars focused on the role of the public sector in the recast of the EED. Earlier this year, we had an introductory session with IECP and the Irish Energy Agency. Two weeks ago, we centered on the role of energy advisory services with the Swedish Energy Agency. And today we conclude the mini series with a session exploring incentive schemes for the renovation of public buildings using the Italian case as an illustration. And for that, please join me in welcoming Laura Ronchetti from the Department Unit Energy Efficiency at EMEA. EMEA is the Italian National Agency for New Technologies, Energy and Sustainable Economic Development. And our second speaker, Rosanna Visone, Energy Efficiency Analyst, Analyst sorry, at GSE, which stands for the Gestore dei Servizi Energetici. And they will highlight two key measures implemented under the Energy Efficiency Directive, the ED, which is the Italian Programme for Energy Renovation of Buildings and the Thermal Account Initiative. So, Lara and Rosanna, I'm really pleased to hand over the microphone. Thank you for the introduction, Dider. Um, today I'll, uh, I'll show you the program for the energy renovation of the central public administration buildings called PREPAC. Sorry. Okay. Uh, just an overview uh, before to talk uh, PREPAC. As stated in the last directive of energy efficiency, European Union member states uh, should decrease their greenhouse gas emissions by at least 55% uh, um, compared to 1990 levels by 2030. The purpose is to achieve a climate neutrality by 2050 and to become a world leader in the development of green technologies in the energy, uh, in the global energy transition. Despite the ongoing process of decarbonization, considerable efforts are still needed regarding building sector in Europe. Uh, according to the International Energy Agency, uh, it represents 40% of the final energy consumption and contributes to 36% of its energy-related greenhouse gas emissions, while 75% of buildings are still energy inefficient. In 2022, Italy's greenhouse gas emissions accounted for approximately 8.9% um, of the European Union total emissions. Significant progress has been recorded during the period 2005-2022 with a reduction of 23% in greenhouse gas emissions. According to an analysis uh, uh, conducted by Enea within uh, um, uh, on the EPC, the um, uh, Energy Performance Certificates within the SIAPE portal, in Italy, 60% of public or publicly used buildings are classified in energy classes E, F, and G. Having said all that, one of the Italian strategies for the achievement of such ambitious objectives uh, is a program of support and financing of action of energy efficiency improvement of public building stock. In transposition of the European Directive, uh, the Legislative Degree 102 of 2014, amended by Legislative Degree 73 of 2020, planned every year starting from 2014 a program for the energy renovation of buildings owned and occupied by central public administration. The goal is to uh, achieve yearly energy renovation rate of at least 3% of the heated and or cooled total floor area. The degree assigned in this way, in this manner, uh, a role, the role of guiding entity um, in the transformation of the building stock uh, to a high efficiency system. 
The degree also established the steering committee of the, the energy efficiency composed of the Minister of Environment and Economic Security, who serves as its chair, the Minister of Enterprises and Made in Italy, the Minister of Infrastructure and Transport, and the Minister of Economy and Finance. The steering committee, with technical support from ENEA and GSA, ensures coordination, data collection, and the necessary monitoring to verify the progress of the program. It also promotes the maximum participation of the involved administration and the publicity of data on achieved results and savings. As mentioned, PREPAC is addressed to central public administration, which includes constitutional bodies and central government authorities. Some entities within a central public administration include prime minister's office, uh, which coordinates uh, government actions, ministries, uh, central bodies responsible for a specific area of competence, law enforcement agencies, such as uh, state police and carabinieri, and financial administration, which are responsible for the tax collection and the control of imports and exports. Following a database and the mapping of public building stock, we know that the total area of a central public administration is around the 60 million square meters. Uh, the degree uh, also established that the following um, buildings are not, um, are not included in the program, uh, specifically buildings with a total useful covered area of less than 250 square meters, buildings protected by the, regula by the conservation uh, regulations of the so-called Code of Cultural Heritage and landscape, uh, if the compliance with the minimum energy performance requirements is not compatible with their character, appearance, or context, or detrimental to their conservation. Buildings intended for national defense purposes except for buildings used as service housing or offices for the armed forces, and uh, buildings used as places for worship and for conducting religious activities. The financial resources amount uh, to a total of 355 million euros in the first seven years of the program, and 75 million euros per year uh, from 2021 to 2030. The degree also established that the implementation of interventions included in the program is managed without new or additional charges to public finance by the interregional superintendencies for public works of the Ministry of Infrastructure and Transports, by the relevant administrations and by the state property agency in order to promote forms of rationalization and coordination among interventions. Uh, with the uh, so-called uh, degree prepack of 2016, implementing modalities are issued. Uh, specifically, um, the followed are described. The following are described. Um, uh, the allowed types uh, of interventions and the allowed expenses, the minimum contents that the, the intervention proposals must to have, uh, the presentation methods of the proposals, the evaluation criteria um, of the proposal and the exemplary projects. Now we'll see them one by one. Uh, the actions allowed into the program concern building envelope and technical systems, uh, such as the, uh, in the thermal insulation of the opaque surfaces or the replacement of the existing uh, air conditioning systems with, um, with other with, um, uh, greatest performance. Um, electricity and thermal energy production systems, as well as other actions uh, provided to reduce energy consumption for the energy services. Um, 
uh, expenses uh, strictly related to the implementation of energy efficiency interventions, uh, um, including that, are uh, eligible for financing. Um, these expenses uh, not exhaustively encompass the supply and the installation of materials, or systems, and devices for monitoring, including related construction works, as well as expense for startup and testing. Professional services related to the implementation of the interventions, the drafting of the energy performance certificate, as well as pre-intervention energy diagnosis of the buildings are allowed uh, for financing. Um, additionally, uh, expenses for the implementation of training and information programs on behavioral norms for energy savings addressed to the users of the building subject to intervention are allowed up to a maximum of 5% of the total project amount. Um, the expenses are also um, verified uh, during the technical and economic examination, and uh, it is responsible of the appliant, uh, of the applicant, uh, to uh, adjust the requested uh, import uh, um, to any um, in, uh, to any requested integrations. Um, some of the main minimum contents, uh, the, the main minimum contents of the proposal must to be an energy assessment uh, based on uh, an APC or an energy diagnosis uh, that identify actions that can lead to a reduction in energy consumption and have a good cost effectiveness ratio. An accurate description of the building and the systems before and after intervention the estimated costs and the estimated times for the implementation of the intervention, the presence of any form of co-financing, and a list of any authorizations required for the implementation of the intervention, such as in case of historical and artistic preservation restriction. The central public administration that intend to participate to the program must submit their proposal um, by the 15th of July to the Minister of the Environment. The feasible proposals from a technical and economic standpoint uh, are placed in a merit ranking established according to these three specific uh, evaluation criteria. The first one with the greatest weight is the ratio between total cost and estimated energy saving. The second one is the presence of co-financing. And the last one is the estimated time for the implementation of the intervention. The degree also established that 20% of the annual available resources are allocated to projects defined as exemplary. An exemplary project is a proposal that includes, at the same time, interventions on the building envelope and on technical systems, and that can lead to primary energy savings of at least 50% compared to current consumption. Looking at the first eight years of the program, 641 proposals were financed, where um, 64, uh, six, uh, 641 proposals were evaluated, of which 310 uh, were financed. The average project amount is around 1.4 million euros, for a total uh, financed amount around 430 million euros. In the same period, um, a surface uh, area of uh, around 2.6 million square meters uh, uh, was financed. The average saving per proposal is uh, 620,000 kilowatt hour per year, while 96% uh, of the proposals were submitted by four ministries, uh, the Minister of Defense, Minister of Economy, Minister of Internal Affairs and Minister of Justice. Therefore, the predominant intended uses are offices, barracks and prisons. 
Uh, here there are main, the main activities of NEA and GSA. Um, in commemoration of the 10 years uh, of the, um, since the inception of PREPAC, NEA has published uh, a summary uh, of the main results uh, um, uh, of the um, technical and economic examination conducted uh, together with the GSA uh, from the period from uh, 2014 to 2022. Uh, specifically, uh, the report focuses on uh, uh, 169 proposals evaluated by ENEA. Um, and uh, um, and uh, um, uh, um, it offers uh, um, uh, uh, some information uh, by uh, year of construction, location, uh, uh, consumption data, um, the types uh, of the intervention requested and the, the associated cost, uh, but also um, uh, the energy savings and the avoided uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, um, reached uh, uh, fo following the interventions. And here uh, the link to the report, to the report now. Uh, thank you for uh, your attention. Uh, now I leave uh, the floor to Rosana. Uh, thank you, Laura. Good morning. I will start sharing and I would like briefly to introduce myself. I am Rossana Visone. I am a functioner of Thermal Account Scheme in Direction of Energy Efficiency in our company. Um, I would like today to focus on our scheme um, and I would like uh, shortly introduce what is our company activities also related to general target that Europe has called to assaults and we will go directly to term account scheme in terms of stakeholders requirement way of access and I would like to conclude with some results, a some example of breaks practice of intermittent incentivized by our scheme. At the end, we have the question as our colleagues has introduced before. So just to start, as you probably know, uh, energy service operator is totally controlled by the state and we promote the production from renewable energy and all schemes to increment the energy efficiency in building. So we may also to answer a question, it's parallel for the colleague. We manage several schemes of incentives and it's a national fund and all the providers are paid by bills paid by user. For example, term account schemes, we have we pay by the bills paid by the humans in terms of gas. So term account schemes is related to the incremental energy efficiency for buildings. So in that area, we grant incentives. And as energy service operator, we support all our stakeholders, public administration, and private parties to realize implementation in their preliminary qualification to realize implementation in appliance with our, with our scheme. Um, as our colleague has told you before, we are called to strength uh, aim, to straight goal in terms of reduction of emission, in terms of incrementation of renewable energy and incrementation of energy efficiency. And just to call that thermal count scheme that we'll see later in the text, it's related to this to, on these three both section. And when we talk about renewable energy source, we talk about thermal energy for thermal count scheme. And just to connect our uh, regulation general in Italy, we move in several, uh, we have, uh, have been implemented several schemes to support. So we have um, implemented a tax deduction in terms of government tax detraction in tax. So the subject pay and they have a detaxation 
with pluriannual schemes. We had 10 markham scheme that we still later we pay a grant support in one solution. We have Y certificate. It's a sort of tradable scheme to semi energy consumption. I don't want to talk about more about PrepAC because my colleague has shown you. So it's specifically for central public administration. And we had had a specific national fund to restore a fund specific scheme for PA or private parties. So let's go straight to scheme that we manage as company. Um, the term account scheme is the implementation of Directio 22 and all requirements are defined by minister degree of February 26. Now we are going to revise this scheme also in accordance with last directive, and we have just opened a question time section with stakeholders. So we are going to implement a new scheme. What is the mission? The mission is to promote the implementation of production from renewable energy and increase the energy efficiency improvements for PA building. So our stakeholders are private parties and all public administration. And we move in a year community spending limit. These are the sections. So 5,000 million and four, uh, four PA. We will see later also the class for implementation. I would like to focus why so mm, why we promote the scheme just because it's simple and effective because we pay in one shot solution one shot solution uh, support the investment cost that you that stakeholder has spending for the investment and for PA it is strength because we support starting their books because we pay in advance the when we have programmed work. So not also at the end of work in general, but we allow to start the work. It's important because uh, our investment, our, our granted can be combinable with other grants. So in specific percentual at zero cost, PA or private party, we can see they can refund all their investment cost. These are the main characters we will see also later in terms of which kind of implementation, which are the stakeholders and how is manage the payment. But what's important, I was mentioned before, for example, for PA, that is our strength now to achieve this goal, to refer, to requalificate their building, is the accumulation with other grants. So for PA building, we can accumulate with other grants up to 100% of cost. With private building, where PA manage the building can be accumulated with no state incentives and for private parties for example natural person we can combine just with no subtle incentives for company we store at up to 65 percent it depends on the size of the company so we move from small medium and big one moving from 45 55 or 65 percent this is these are all our kind of intervention uh, we mean we have two clusters divided between PA and private parties. PA are allowed to have access to all kinds of incentives. Our interventions we have seen later are related to incrementation of energy efficiency of building. So we are talking about insulation of wool, thermal insulation of wool, seal, etc., or opaque structures. We are incentivized. Um, replacement of fixtures, replacement with installation condensing boiler, installation shedding system, uh, removal of previous light system with higher lighting is more efficient, installation building automation. We will see later also example of requalification building in terms of near zero building. Then we have the cluster two that are allowed the private parties as well. That's the with the goal to in, to increment the production from renewable energy with replacement of previous plants. So we incentivize heat pumps, biomass boiler, solar thermal energy installation, heat pump water heaters, on hybrid heat pump systems. So these are all kinds of implementation. 
what is the scope? The scope is always to requalificate the building. So um, a requirement is an existing a stacked building air conditioned. That's why we talk, we always check the characteristic of the building and the presence of a present plant, because we are going to remove that kind of plant. Or if we are trying to improve the requalification energy, we need to have a previous plant as well. We always suggest that suggests an energy audit because it's a technical documentation to identify the mix of intervention to be to have to have a higher level of energy efficiency of that building. For us, which are the subject, the center is the building. That's why the owner of that building can have access to that kind of incentives or a subject that have the ability on that building because uh, as a sort of rights on that building. For example, the PA or providers, the subject who to effective are responsible of for expenditure or energy service companies who realize the intervention despite of the owner or that we will see also later. So these are interventions that we see later, cluster one related to the incrementation of energy efficiency and cluster two or the interventions to promote thermal energy production from renewable energy. That's the meaning. Replacement previous plant and production from thermal energy from renewable energy. So we check the performance of the, of the, um, the boiler or the, the plant and we incentivize small plants. So with thermal cam skin, we move, we manage up to 2,000 kilowatts to up to 2,005 meters, so small plants. We check as always um, thermal insulation or energy in increasement with specific parameters in terms of construction, in terms of specific coefficient or if transmission in requirements with the, with the queen. Our are quantified our incentive. I just uh, I just just said you before that we pay eligible costs. So we define eligible costs to stains to realize intervention, and we cover up to 65%. It depends on intervention, and we move in the level of maximum unit costs and maximum selling established by the degree. So if the PA, because we are talking about cluster one now, incremental energy efficiency, we can increment the percentual if they combine a energy efficient intervention plus and replacement with production from renewable energy. For example, if they have thermal insulation plus an installation and replacement of heat pump, we can cover up to uh, 55%. That's important news of last year. It's also the grant up to 100% of costs for school and hospital. So thermal count schemes is a strength to requalify school and hospital of our nation. For cluster two, so production, the scheme is similar. We promote in terms of production of energy. So we check the size, the produce, producibility, and specific adjustment coefficients related to valorization thermal energy. These are the ways of access. I've told you before, in general, PA private parties will restore and end of work. And we pay in one solution, always for PA, or for private party in single sum, if we, uh, if incentive is over specific amount or 5,000, and it depends on the side, but at maximum we pay in two or five years. For PA, we have other chances. We pay in advance before they start the work. So there are several cases in presence of energy audit and then act where PA certificating the planning on the works, in presence of energy performance contract, or in presence of a seed work. We had several cases, but what is important thing, they have specific step, no? In terms of a and starting, and we pay before they start, when they start work, and then we pay a balance at the end of work within 60 days. 
Several logical in case of energy performance contract, we pay when they start working and at the balance and the end of work when they have consumptivated the work. What is important for us, for PA, PA in general in Italy, but also in our country, I suppose, they have do not enough resources to start interventation. Also for big interventation, to requalificate. That's why they can delegate an energy service company in present of energy performance contract. In this case, energy service company assume the risk and assume all the cost to realize the investment um, with a specific due fee, no, a specific fee due by the PA. In this case, incentives are gone to energy service company and our incentives are finalized to reduce the fee that PA have to do to, to energy service company. The important is in this way, we follow specific requirements for energy performance contract. And the goal is reduce the fee and reduce the cost of expenditure and reduce the effective consume of that building of PA. I would like to focus on one common interventation for PA that is near zero energy consuming. What does that mean? It's an interventation related to a general qualification of that building. And we, it's a mix of thermal, uh, a mix of incrementation, inter, inter, uh, a mix of interventation related to increment energy efficiency and also replacement of plants. We, uh, incentivize also demolition and rebuilding that structure up to incrementation volume of 25%. This is an example to, to show you how we quantify incentives uh, that we can mutuate in other interventions, for example, thermal insulation, etc. This is the, the scheme, this is the, the, the quantification. We have a specific percentile uh, limit, limited, and we have the investment costs related maximum to the surface um, usable area, and we have maximum value of incentive. For example, this is for climatic zone E, the maximum value of cost incentive, and this is the maximum value of incentives that can be uh, encouraged. That's why it's important. We are, we are searching the eligible costs. For our eligible are all the seismic adaption related to thermal increment efficiency, all the plants installed and remote, uh, remote. And this is, we can mutuate it in all interventions that we don't have that to talk about. We are going over to parameters in case of and see, we see all efficiency, all in the uh, primary indices, and all kinds of energy, um, minimum fraction production from renewable energy, compared to a referred and limit building defined by the degree. So punctually, we go all kinds of parameters. Show you, I would like to show, um, I have seen before, we move, we manage public, uh, panic found, and this is our thermal count meter that's available on our website. So monthly, every day it changes. At the moment, at April, we have almost 300 million of incentive uh, commitment divided between private at the green, red at PA. And here we have the cap that at, uh, at the moment we have between PA and private party. We'll see before the cap of 5,000 for PA and we are here, and 44, sorry, uh, 54 privates and 44 PA. So we have still its increment and we have uh, enough space to grant incentives. Uh, these are represent the number of um, interventions last, but at the moment by, P by private parties, the higher are. Um, the, the class UV, so installation on Bolle, we see also later. And for PA, we have the higher number of replacement with condensing boiler installation uh, of thermal insulation and near zero building. 
I would like to finish with the uh, results of last year. Uh, we can see in terms of number and uh, intervention realized. In this case, I will show you the end report just to show you also covered parties. The higher level of numbers is related to installation boiler from biomass solar thermal on the south and represented with heat pumps. And we have controlized uh, almost 1,000 requests. I would like just to finish with some example to show you we promove uh, SPA or require general require uh, requalification really from school, hospital, or also office as well. So this is an example of near zero intervention where they have demolished they were demolated previous plant. But I would like to show the strength because with thermal count and the region found we have covered all the investment costs of PA. That's the strength, thermal count and data scheme. And as schemes or thermal account, we have support uh, almost 60% of the course. The similar thing is for this primary school in Milan, near Milan. So with the mm, sort uh, also in this case, they achieved the class of enzyme with several interventions in terms of thermal insulation, installation shading, and with the installation of photovoltaic system to achieve the, of the minimum uh, quarter from renewable energy. And we have resourced the investment cost for 12% uh, because a, a previous fund has been already granted. This is another example of demolition and, re and rebuilding um, of the building. And also in this case, depending on other fund, we have restored all the investment costs. I would like to finish with one example of PA as well, so a municipal offices with a near zero building where the in this kind of interventation, thermal, thermal shade, illumination, we have moved from class A to class A and achievement on near zero building as well. So I have finished. Thank